on Monday Thursday, we remember that Jesus got together with his closest friends, his chosen family, and he celebrated in the guest room, the upper room, the Passover, just like all the other Jews around him were doing, and as Jews do to this day. Before everyone sat, he took the role of a slave. He got down, and he used water and a cloth. to bathe the feet of all of the disciples. This is the act of a servant, of a slave. And they were embarrassed. Why would he do this? Why would he wash the feet of Peter, who would deny him, Judas, who would betray him, why would he work so hard and be so lowly? And Jesus replied, Do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that's what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. And then he concluded, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I've loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So with clean feet, they sat down at their Seder meal. And this is a time to celebrate and to tell the story of how God liberated the Israelites from slavery in ancient Egypt, to remember the Exodus and the covenants at this Wine is shared, and bread. Things to touch and taste and smell, symbolic food. And this is how you could remember the whole story. And we read that Jesus reclined just as to this day, those who celebrate the Seder meal are encouraged to recline, relax, celebrate. We read that Jesus took the bread. Maybe he took the three pieces of matzah bread that are still to this day put in the center of the table. This bread of affliction. When everyone today eats it, they declare, all who are hungry or needy, come and eat. They invite all strangers, all wanderers, all the poor, everyone. Come, eat. The bread is broke. The table is set. Come and eat. But when Jesus took this bread of affliction, he said, This is my body, which is broken and shared among all of you. He said this, reminding us that we are now the body of Christ. We are broken into parts and individuals, but we are part of one whole. And we're fed and nourished by Jesus. We read that after Jesus and his chosen family ate, he took the cup. But which cup was it? If he took his own cup, Perhaps it was the third cup of wine that had been poured, the cup of blessings. Or maybe he took Elijah's cup. In many households, the door is opened in case Elijah should return, and there's a place set for him. A cup of wine is set there, anticipating that he will come and announce the coming of the Messiah. If Jesus took Elijah's cup, 
he was saying that this is the time I am the Messiah Elijah has come and if he took the cup of blessing he is to he is reminding us that he is our blessing whichever cup he took Jesus called for the covenant of Israel and reminded people of the covenant that the Egyptian refugees had made with the God they met on the mountaintop through Moses and this covenant that they made Jesus affirms and says and now there is a new covenant a covenant of forgiveness and it's a new chapter in the relationship between God and God's people and this chapter begins with Jesus inside the cup is the fruit of the vine grapes wine or juice Jesus told us that he is the vine and we are the branches we are the grapes and God is the gardener we're the good fruit of the earth that God is growing wine is for celebration and rejoicing we read it's poured out as a libation as a gift to the divine sweet and good and so Jesus was asking us to take our meals our common everyday meals our special meals both and use them to remember him Easter we're going to have communion together I ask you to go through your house and choose a plate, choose a cup, choose bread or crackers, choose juice or pop, and bring these items with you for the service. We'll bless them. We'll bless the food at hand. We'll eat and drink what is at hand. And remember that in the mundane, in the normal things, that is where we find our risen Lord. That's where the holy comes into our life and everyday little things. So, blessings on your Maudi Thursday. Blessings on the dinner you have this evening. Blessings as you remember and recall the story of Jesus when he sat with his disciples for the last time over the Last Supper. Blessings and Amen.